The French Impressionist Frederick Bazille crafted many incomplete works before his demise in 1870 when he fought in a war. The Little Gardener showcases a wonderfully landscaped garden with a boy in the blurred foreground, watering his plants. The center left draws our attention with a grand fluorescent bush that has beautiful pink flowers on it. Could be a bougainvillea or an azalea. Amongst all the other plants in this artwork, that bush prevailed. With this canvas, Frederick was carrying out his obsession with flowers after being surrounded by bloom and botany and interested artists. Born into a wealthy family in Montpellier, France, Bazille was permitted by his parents to study painting under the circumstances that he also studied medicine, which he did not do that much. He moved to Paris, where he studied with Monet and Renoir, and the three of them became big benefactors of the Impressionism movement. All of them creating these beautiful paintings, Frederick surrounded himself by these people who so pay so much attention to detail, especially in their flowers. Monet created an artist's garden named Giverny displaying purple and blue flowers in a garden. And Renaud created Claude Monet painting in his garden at Argentua, showcasing Monet painting in the foreground with beautiful, highly detailed red, white, and green flowers in the background and in the foreground and everywhere in this painting, as you can see. Although Renoir and Monet's paintings were created after Brazil's passing, there is no doubt that they studied the environment as an art form together. The people around Frederick influenced him as an impressionist and could be the cause of the birth of the little gardener. Brazil's childhood family home in Southern France is the location of this painting and the backstory of the rest of the painting is very unknown because Bazio kept very quiet on his work. As well as a lot of other paintings by Bazio, the little gardener is left unfinished. And the bush in the middle, center left, with the pink flowers on it are perfectly in detail, as so is the boys, mostly finished, but a lot of other spots lack the amount of detail and brush strokes grit and that are supposed to lay in the painting. Frederick conveys a beautiful perspective of plants to satisfy his interests. To understand, he is obsessed with flowers. A look at his history of other works is essential. Young woman with peonies showcases a black woman with a somber facial expression. Her face is rather dim compared to her surroundings of bright and beautifully detailed flowers. The flowers enlighten the entirety of the image, utilizing perfected lines and contrasting colors of yellow, white, black, green, and red. La Toyette, painted by Bazille as well, has a white nude lady sitting down with two women beside her, preparing the center lady to delve into a ceremony called La Toyette. In its non-direct definition, La Toyette is the name of the tradition of preparing for the day. The piece is considered almost finished, yet the finished portion includes a flower-decorated dress. Frederick Bazille has always focused on flowers, and it is no surprise that the flowers are completed in his pieces of work. The little gardener is full of principles and elements waiting to be delved upon. The stylized floral designs were created with long brush strokes and specific directions to perceive the impression of flowers swaying on the grass. Irregular shapes are scattered across the surface to become a recognizable tree in the background behind the boy. The numerous uneven white lines give the effect of clouds floating above the boy while being blurred, therefore giving the magnificent bush the spotlight. Looking very closely, Frederick Bazille created incomplete strokes in a gray outline of what looks to be a second person watering the garden. The design is towards the bottom right and somewhat overlapping the beautiful shrub if Frederick had completed it. The outline of this invisible person does not match with the rest of the painting because the completed portions consist of the maintained style of implied lines rather than defined edges. I assume this figure is his mother, as he was very close with his mother when he was younger. Through the flow of his brush, Bazille invites the viewer to a subversive texture, allowing us to imagine the feeling of the flowering shrub in the middle. 
Blue skies and various greens give a solid contrasting value to absorb the audience into peaceful scenery. Space between the foreground and the large bush full of uninhibited pink flower produces the illusion of space by creating a sense of depth. Frederick emphasizes beauty to gardens when establishing disparity, creating a sense of depth. The unfinished strokes allow imagination to run free as if the red flowers are flowing in the wind or simply stasis. The manila color presented its center of the piece is predicted to be a driveway or a dirt road. The driveway placement provides harmony and unity by organizing the repetition of color as the same color used for the most significant cloud in the sky. The painting is left unfinished, yet the little gardener portrays asymmetrical balance by providing the boy on the right as a subject in the great bush on the left. Bazille utilizes the rule of thirds and contrast to direct the viewers to gaze to the boy in the bush at the focal points. Recurring depictions of finished and unfinished red flowers repeating combinations of light green strokes with heavy dark verdescent shadows. Continuous scattered gray specks among the sky and tinted chartreuse-like patches spread along the grass furnish the tranquility of such a masterpiece. Bazille's utilization of patterns and color critically emphasizes his love for flowers. In the 15th century, unsettled painters had controversial amounts of time waiting for paint to dry until this one named Jen Van Eek came around and he invented oil painting. When painting came around about 20,000 years ago, humans would use charcoal and different minerals and even saliva or fat from animals to paint on the walls. But this guy, Jan van Eek, created oil painting by mixing linseed oil and oil from nuts or different manifolds of colors from nuts. Being an impressionist, Bazille's painting is definitely a form of representational art. From the boy at the bottom of the painting to the clouds at the top, any human eye can find these objects and subjects very recognizable. The lines and shapes are generally irregular, pointed in specific directions, and masterly positioned, where the brain can instantly resemble similarities. Through the mass amount of books and research that I have done over the Little Gardener, Impressionism, and Frederick Bazille himself, which are represented right here, no text or article presented any information or details regarding the outline that I discovered in this painting. It's either everyone looked at it and didn't and just said that's an unfinished part or no one paid attention to it. I believe that this portion of the work can definitely alter the story behind today's painting. The outline could resemble his mother, as I said before, and it, the story could change from a boy painting to a boy bonding with his mother while watering the plant. The outline, the outline was either ignored or gone unnoticed for over 154 years somehow. It seems as if the knowledge of this outline and the backstory of this painting is truly going to be 100% known in Frederick Bazille's grave. The Little Gardener showcases a beautiful landscape with a hint of mystery, leaving us, leaving us wondering what would have happened if he actually completed the final painting or if there was even a second person, or if he was planning to erase the said outline. Bazille was surrounded by the other impressionists of Renoir and Monet, who also influenced him in detail, such as flowers. When looking at Latoye, we can see the lady having the flowers on her black dress, and that how their finished detail and some other parts lack detail. Once again, Bazille has proved himself as an impressionist, by making the viewers believe that the environment really inhabits flowers, clouds, and this boy watering his plants. He used the techniques of implied lines, color, and unity to accomplish such an environment that we truly believed in. Without his obsession, he can be remembered as just a figure painter, but with his obsession of flowers, the beauty of this canvas really comes out.